Cards Against Creatures, Round 8. After a 20 minute break to visit the restroom, refill on their snacks, and draw another white card to put them all back up to 10, the six students reconvened in their dormitory to resume their game of Cards Against Equestria. Alright, Sinbar began as everyone sat back down into their circle. Is every creature ready to begin? Gallus silently flashed his thumbs up in a response after shoving a claw full of potato chips in his beak, mirroring what Silverstream did a few turns prior. Across from him, the excitable Hippogriff giggled a bit at the familiar notion. The other three students simply gave Sandbar an affirmative head nod to show him that they were all ready as well. Alright then, let's begin. Sandbar continued with a smile, drawing the first black card of the round. I'm sorry, sir, but your insurance doesn't cover injuries caused by blank. There was already some light laughter from the prompt alone, which gave the group high hopes that this would be a good one. And, unlike the first card from the last round, there seemed to be plenty of excitement from each of the participating students as they selected their cards. Once every creature had chosen their card for this round, they passed them towards Sandbar, who quickly shuffled them before reading out the first one. I'm sorry, sir, but your insurance doesn't cover injuries caused by multiple stab wounds. The first one got a few laughs from the group. That must be a pretty bad insurance policy if it doesn't cover something as basic as that. Smolder commented as she took a bite of one of her snacking gems. Or it could just be a standard equestrian insurance policy since stabbings are practically non-existent here. Sandbar replied. Funny. Griffinstone wouldn't have that kind of insurance cover either, but for entirely different reasons. Gallus interjected. No offense, Gallus, but after how you described Griffinstone, I don't think I'd ever want to go there. Sandbar was a little bit worried that he may have gone a little bit too far with what he said, like he had earlier. Gallus, however, simply shrugged his shoulders in response. Hey, if that's all you take away from this game, I'd call that a victory. He said, not taking offense at all in the slightest. Sandbar smiled good-naturedly. Good to know then, he said, drawing the next white card. I'm sorry, sir, but your insurance doesn't cover injuries caused by your weird brother. The second card got more laughter than the first, from everyone in the group. That's certainly something I could have used growing up with my brother, Smolter commented. Well, that is until we kicked him out of the cave when he started molting, she added. You said it, sister, Silverstream agreed. Moving on, Sandbar drew the next card. I'm sorry, sir, but your insurance doesn't cover injuries caused by a magician fucking up over and over again. Trixie loses more assistance that way. Gallus' comment got the most laughter yet, with some of the students falling onto their sides laughing. Sandbar had to wait and compose himself before he was able to speak again and read out the next card. I'm sorry, sir, but your insurance doesn't cover injuries caused by powerful suction. That card got a few laughs, but nowhere near as much as the previous one, so Sandbar moved on quickly and drew the last card. I'm sorry, sir, but your insurance doesn't cover injuries caused by getting eaten out by a dog. This card got a few light chuckles, but on the whole, the group was starting to wind down now. Once they were done, Sandbar lined up the five white cards out in front of him, trying to make a decision. Ah, uh, let's see... Sandbar began, tapping his hoof to his lip as he thought. I don't know, I'm torn between the weird brother and the magician card, he said as he tried to decide between them. I'll... I'll go with the magician card. Damn it! That other one was mine! Smolder suddenly yelled out. Her overly competitive attitude got another round of laughter from the rest of the group. Okay, so who had the magician card? Sandbar asked, holding up the black card for this round. Ocellus raised her hoof in response and Sandbar passed her the card. The young pony then turned towards Gallus. Okay, man, you're up next. You don't have to say it, man. We're all plenty familiar with the rules at this point. Gallus responded as he drew the next black card. Okay, this is another two-card round. He said as he glanced at the card before saying it out loud. Step one, blank. Step two, blank. Step three, profit. The rest of the students got to selecting their cards, taking extra consideration to account for the order in which they would be played. Once everyone had all five piles, he chose one at random and started reading them out loud. Step 1, Loud Scary Thunder. Step 2, Sewing two hamsters together to make a double hamster supreme. Step 3, Profit. There was a moderate amount of laughter from the group. 
That sounds like a mad scientist get rich quick scheme, Sandbar set aside. Gallus then picked out another two cards at random. Step one, 10,000 shrieking teenage girls. Step two, believing women. Step three, profit. This card set was pretty boring, so with an eye roll to show it, he moved on quickly. Step one, letting this loser eat me out. Step two, accusing a powerful man of sexual assault. Step three, profit. The laughter returned in earnest with this card, and Gallus found it particularly funny. Well, it certainly sounds like an easy way to make money, if you have no morals. He noted. He then drew the next two cards. Step one, going an entire day without masturbating. Step two, an arrangement wherein I give a person money and they have sex with me. Step three, profit. Basically, just a more direct version of the previous card. Smolder commented. Boring. And finally... Gallus began, drawing the last set of cards for this prompt. Step one, forget everything you know about household cleaning products. Step two, many bats. Step three, profit. So, you employ bats as cleaning agents? Ocellus wondered aloud. That's certainly an interesting spin on things. After reading out all the cards, like Sandbar did before him, Gallus laid them all out in front of him, face up this time, trying to decide on a winner. Ah, uh, it's either gotta be the mad scientist or the sexual assault card. He said as he looked over the five sets of cards, trying to make a decision, with the other five students anxiously waiting his decision. I'll go with the sexual assault one. Torch, damn it! It happened again! Smolder suddenly exclaimed, face palming in annoyance. Hey, you said the thing! Silverstream said with a friendly laugh. Not now, Silverstream! Smolder responded flatly after a defeated sigh. Across from her, her hippogriff friend just casually shrugged her shoulders in response. A anyway, uh, that card was mine, she said, speaking up again, now facing Gallus, blushing a little when she addressed him directly. Turning towards her, Gallus blushed a bit himself as their talons almost touched when he handed her the black card as her point for the round. Yona up next! The excitable Yak suddenly yelled out, leaning forward and drawing a black card. Blank! Betcha can't have just one! After this sudden interruption, the rest of the students all got to selecting their cards. Okay, since the goal is to be horrible, I better win with this card. Smolder said as she was the first one to hand in her card. After being handed the rest of the cards and a quick shuffle to randomize them, Yona drew the first card and read them out loud. Illegal immigrants! Bet you can't just have one! Not in this economy. Gallus interjected. At least creatures sneaking into the country isn't a problem in Griffinstone. Are you done venting about Griffinstone? Smolder wondered aloud. Uh, for now. After Gallus and Smolder were finished with their little back and forth, Yona then drew the next white card. Nipples the size of CDs! Bet you can't just have one! Laughter returned to the room once again. Well, if you have nipples that big, odds are good that it's not gonna be just one of them. Ocellus mentioned. Boogers! Bet you can't just have one! And that's how habits farm. Silverstream mentioned. Slaves! Bet you can't just have one! This time, the laughter was more... uncomfortable. Wow! That horrible! Yona added. She then drew the last card. However, she immediately paled, halting her momentum for the round. Little... boy... penises. Bet you can't have just one. The entire room fell in an uncomfortable silence, with none of the students feeling like laughing at all. No, that... that's horrible. Ocellus corrected. Yona agree. Yona first thinking of choosing slaves, but instead choose this card. Oh, that is just excessive! Smolder suddenly exclaimed, throwing her cards onto the ground in a fit. Smolder's excessive competitiveness restored in a bit of mirth to the group after an uncomfortable silence of the last card, with a few light giggles from the rest of the students. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, that's my card. Silverstream suddenly spoke up, with an excitable smile on her face. Turning towards her, Yona simply hoofed her the black card, also with a smile on her face, thanks to Smolder's overreacting, erasing the awkwardness from the last card. Across from her, Gallus had a dorky smile on his face, seeing Silverstream's excited smile at winning the point. Turning towards Smolder, it was then morphed into a cocky grin. Well, look on the bright side, Smolder. For this card, at least you know you can't win. Eat me. Smolder deadpanned as she drew the next black card, not even bothering to look up at him. Uh, no, no thanks. 
Gallus responded immediately in the same tone of voice. The dragoness just grumbled before reading out the black card. Blank is a slippery slope that leads to blank. The rest of the students all quickly drew another white card, each adding it to their hands and then started selecting the next two that they would use for this prompt and began passing them towards her two at a time. After receiving every set of cards, Smolder began shuffling them around onto the floor in front of her. With her enthusiasm for the game starting to return a little, she then picked up the first two cards. Breastfeeding in public like a radiant earth goddess is a slippery slope that leads to hundreds of nipples. There wasn't much laughter for those cards. Well, a breastfeeding goddess probably would have hundreds of nipples. Ocellus noted. Smolder quickly picked up the next two cards. A purse that costs 5,000 bits and a slippery slope that leads to preparing my asshole for sex. That paints kind of a dark story if you think about it. Gallus offered. Next two cards. Getting high with mom is a slippery slope that leads to being able to talk to elephants. Accurate, Sandbar noted. Smolder picked up the next pair of cards and she couldn't help cracking up when she read it initially, causing her to read it out loud with much more enthusiasm than the others. Three ticks at the same time is a slippery slope that leads to having sex with a man, then eating his head. The rest of the students had the same reaction, with the whole room erupting in laughter. Well, it didn't say which head she'd be eating, Silverstream added. That immediately caused a resurgence in laughter. Now re-energized, picking up the two final cards, Smolder again cracked a smile when she saw the cards before she read it out aloud. Trolling and mumbling into my pussy is a slippery slope that leads to yelling at my unborn son through my wife's vagina. The students again broke out in laughter, with some of them falling onto their sides laughing. Okay, that one, that one was good. But, you know what, I'm gonna have to go with the three dicks at the same time one. Smolder spoke up, wiping a tear from her eye in laughter. That's me, Sandbar responded, holding his hoof out as Smolder passed him the black card as his point. Smolder then laid back, with both of her claws against the floor behind her for support, letting out a contented breath. Okay, alright, I'm feeling better now. I just, I needed a good laugh with some friends and, a, and some raunchy humor. Sandbar smiled. It looks like this game can get you mad, but it can also help you feel better when you do get mad, he noted. That's good. Ocella spoke up. Maybe we can include that in our final report for Starlight. Oh, sure thing. Smolder replied, playfully eyebrowing the changeling next to her. You're up next, by the way. Blushing a little from the contact, Ocellus then used her magic to draw the next black card. Okay, this is another two cards prompt. I never truly understood blank until I encountered blank. After every creature drew another two cards, now with renewed vigor, the rest of the group once again started selecting another two cards for the next prompt. Ocellus took each set of cards, one at a time, setting each pile in front of her. When she had all five piles, she picked one up at random and read them out loud. I never truly understood balls until I encountered my math teacher's bulge. Well, that's pretty awkward, considering that our math teacher is Miss Rarity, Smolder said with her trademark smirk. Moving on! Ocellus quickly shouted out, drawing the next card, not wanting that particular mental image to have a chance to properly form in her head. I never truly understood treating people as objects for self-gratification until I encountered lotion. AKA when puberty hits. Gala spoke up. His commentary caused more laughter for the card, giving it a better context. I never truly understood announcing that I am about to come until I encountered a loser slut. That card didn't get much of a reaction, so she just moved on quickly. I never truly understood alcoholism until I encountered the inevitable heat death of the universe. Dark. Yona deadpanned. As soon as Ocellus levitated the final card up to her view, she immediately had to bring it to her hoof, to her mouth to stifle her giggling. She briefly felt a pang of regret before speaking up, but in the spirit of the game and with how others have been playing with her recently, she decided to run with it anyway. Okay. I think the way that Smolder has been acting this round has made my decision from he. She began, shooting a devilish smirk in the direction of her dragon friend, which looked out of place on the usually shy and timid-looking changeling. I never truly understood complaining until I encountered a dragon. The entire group, save for Smolder, immediately burst out laughing. Smolder was steaming with rage at this point, before returning in earnest. Oh, you guys can just eat all the dicks! She exclaimed. Not Gallus, he's straight. Silverstream spoke up in between laughs. Especially Gallus. 
The rest of them doubled over in laughter, even Callus falling onto their fronts and backs in laughter. Ocellus again tried to stifle her laughter so that she could speak properly. Okay, okay, who, who, who had that card? Especially Gallus! The griffin replied, who was currently on his back from laughter, raising his claw into the air to signal himself. Ocellus then simply floated the black heart over to him, into his open claw. The group then spent the next minute trying to calm down enough to continue with their game. Smulder, meanwhile, just sat with her arms crossed and a stoic expression on her face. 110% done. Yona thinks Smulder not having fun anymore, the young Yag noticed. Well, that's cards against Equestria for you, Sandbar replied. Sometimes you win, and sometimes you lose. Or like, sometimes you laugh with your friends, and sometimes you want to kill your friends, Smulder deadpanned. Sandbar just chuckled good-naturedly. Yeah, that's probably more accurate. The rest of the group of friends agreed with him on that. Another moment later, Smulder finally relented and cracked a smile. Alright, let's just play the final card and end the round. Now that's more like it. Silverstream spoke up in an excitable tone, drawing the last black card of the round. Why am I sticky? Smulder couldn't help but giggle silently at the prompt, getting back into the spirit of the game once again. Along with the rest of our friends, she started to select her card for this round. Once every creature had made their selection with plenty of enthusiasm and no awkward pauses, they passed their cards towards Silverstream, who quickly shuffled them and then drew the first one. Why am I sticky? Bees. Probably has something to do with honey, Sandbar guessed. Why am I sticky? Poppin' that pussy. That earned a round of laughter from the group. Yeah, that would get you sticky, Smulder commented. Why am I sticky? Exactly what you'd expect. The laughter continued. I really like this one, Silverstream noted. Leave it to your imagination, Ocellus followed. Why am I sticky? Staring into each other's eyes and coming at the same time. That card was similar to the previous one, so she moved on quickly. And finally, why am I sticky? Sexual peeing. There was some more light and good-natured laughter from the whole group, but on the whole, things were starting to wind down. I think this was a good round to end on, Sandbar commented. Yep, just good old-fashioned vulgar humor that you can only be comfortable laughing with at your closest friends. Gala summarized. Yeah. Silverstream agreed with a faint blush on her cheeks as she responded to him. Okay, well, I'll go with the exactly what you'd expect one, she said, holding the card up. Gallus then raised his claw in response, so Silverstream passed them the black card for his point, this time both of them having light blushes. Ocellus couldn't help but give a knowing smirk, witnessing their exchange. Out of curiosity, Silverstream, what would have been your second choice? Ocellus asked. Silverstream brought a talent to her beak in thought. Huh. I... I, I don't know, maybe sexual peeing? Suddenly, Smulder dropped her cards. I'm... done. She spoke very calmly. She then quietly stood up, simply walked out of the room, and as she left, the rest of the students couldn't help but find her stoic acceptance to be amusing. Okay, let's take another short break and give Smulder a moment to cool down, Senbar said as he watched her leave the room. As of now, the scoreboard is Sandbar 8, Gallus 8, Yona 8, Smulder 6, Ocellus 9, Silverstream 9.